open our text here. We got troubles, and we need to pray. We need to be witnessing. Uh, the church needs to grow. We need to fight the good fight. Amen. Because if we just lay down our arms and don't go out and try to do what's right, we're you know ruffle some feathers. Stand out here fr- week from Friday. We're going to be out on the street corner holding up some scripture signs. That's the least you can do. Once a week, get out there, just hold up a show about twenty people out on the street corner saying. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Or believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, now shalt be saved. Get a little scripture sign. Hold up your Bible. Let people drive it up and down. Cruise cow spell. No. Amen. We love the Bible. We love Jesus. All right, here we are. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. But look back in chapter 10. And Paul says these words in verse 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? It's a cup. Never is it called wine, by the way. Nowhere in a King James Bible is the cup called wine. It's always called the cup. When Jesus took the cup. Nowhere is there any indication or is there any inference that it's alcohol. In fact, the opposite is true. Jesus took, he said, when you drink the fruit of the vine, you'll drink it with me in the kingdom of my Father. It's the fruit of the vine. Joseph in the Bible, when he stood before Pharaoh, took the grapes and squeezed them into the cup. They were fresh. David said, I will not take up their drink offerings into my mouth. The Catholic Church calls it a sacrifice. No, this is not a sacrifice. This is not the cup of devils that we participate in. We take the fresh juice as a symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ, and it's called the cup. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? What this depicts today is that we all ought to be right with one another also. Right with the Lord and right with one another because we are the body of Christ. So when we take the Lord's Supper, we should examine ourselves. First of all, am I saved? Yes, I know I'm saved. Then that makes you worthy to take of the bread and take of the cup. But secondly, you also ought to look at yourself and say, is there any ought in my heart towards a brother or a sister Is there something that's not right with my heart, with God, and with somebody else? We should examine our time, our hearts at this time. And we are as many, verse 17, for we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. We're all saved by the same way. We're all sinners saved by grace. And, uh, you know, people fail you. People do wrong. You know, you ought to have mercy on them like the Lord did you. That's what the picture is this that this is the lord forgiving us and as he forgave us we ought to forgive others and we ought to look at our hearts and examine our hearts at this time and say lord what what's what's going on in my heart help me lord to examine myself chapter 11 and it well let me read the let me read on a little bit verse 20 in chapter 10 but i say that the things which the gentiles sacrifice They sacrifice to devils and not to God. I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. We don't call this a sacrifice. But the Catholic Church calls what they do on Sunday, the Mass, a sacrifice. It's very strange. The Bible warns a Christian not to eat the the Mass of the Catholic Church or a Protestant Church, which considers it to be a sacrifice of the Lord's body. They call it the elements and the Mass. The Bible doesn't call it the Mass and it doesn't call it the elements. Amen. This is not his physical body being transformed. This is not his blood, nor can it be on earth. That would be cannibalism. And the Lord forbade man to eat, drink blood throughout all the scriptures before the law, during the law, and after the law. So if you're drinking the blood of Jesus Christ, you're breaking the scriptures. And I was a Catholic. I need to remind some of you are new Christians, this is not transformation of anything into some other form. There is not a miracle that's going to take place. When you drink that, it's just juice and it's bread and it symbolizes something different in your heart took place when you got saved and your heart should be changed every time you take it. You should say, Lord, help me to examine my life and judge my sins. You're here this morning not to judge others, but to judge yourself. When you take the Lord's Supper, it's a time of judgment on yourself and say, Lord, teach me to quit sinning. Help me, Lord. Verse 21, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table, which is this here, and the table of devils. That's somewhere in this world. Somebody's taking something that the Lord said, don't take it. 
Christian, you shouldn't be in the world and you shouldn't be drinking at their table and eating at their table. And that might be a bar for some Christians that are tempted. That might be a casino. That might be the Catholic Church for someone else. There's some areas in your life God said, no, don't eat off that table. That's not for you. you there are idols involved with that. Amen? Those are idols. And uh, devils. You read that thing back there, it talks about Gentiles and their idols. Verse 19. What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered and sacrificed to idols is anything? So we don't have idols here. And uh, let's go to chapter 11. So Paul commends them that they didn't do those things, and that they tried to keep the Lord's table the way that Paul taught it. We should do the same. Christians need to keep the ordinances. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'll bless our time here, that we will take this with reverence, with self-examination, with rejoicing, that your promises, Lord, with salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for dying on the, sending your Son to die on the cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for shedding your precious blood for our sins to save our souls. Lord, we pray that everybody in this room truly is born again and knows you as their personal Savior. Lord, help us to examine ourselves now at this time as we hear the word and we reflect on our own hearts and we think about our lives and our service to thee. Help us, Lord, to do better. In Jesus' name, amen. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Paul was a good Christian, and Paul took the Lord's Supper. And Paul was a was a faithful Christian to keep the ordinances of God. And so should we. He says, I praise you. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things. So they, they listened to Paul, and they remembered what he taught them. And they said, Let's, we will continue to do that. So this is one of the things the Corinthian church was commended on. They kept the ordinances. He says, I, you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. We as Christians have basically three main ordinances in the church. There is the baptism of the believer. There is the communion of the saints with the Lord's Supper. And then there is the ordination into the ministry of deacons and pastors. And those, are ord those men are ordained to uh, fulfill this call, to, uh, to preach the gospel, to baptize, and to have the Lord's Supper. You can't do that at home. Amen. It needs to be revered. It's something that's not revered today is the Lord's house, the Lord's service. Look with me in verse uh, 20 through 20, uh, maybe 22. He says, when you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's supper. So there was a lack of reverence. There was a lack of uh, what we are doing when we come to God's house. These folks are getting together with just their click. You'll notice that in the next few verses here. He says, uh, for in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper. They weren't thinking about anybody else. It was a very selfish church. They weren't coming to church to serve. They were coming to church to get something and to take care of themselves and jump in line first. And, um, you know, it's, that's something you see when you say, okay, the elderly and the kids, let them go first. Or, you know, you, and when you get in line, you know, just some of you folks can wait and let, have some honor to the older people. It's kind of like that. They weren't waiting in line. They were jumping up ahead for everyone, eating one. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. Now, back in those days, they actually had a real table set. And uh, it wasn't like just bread and these little cups here that we do for the communion table. But back then, the Christians got together and had a real feast. They had a real supper. And it was supposed to be a holy event. But it became drunken. They began to get into debauchery. You can listen, listen to what Paul's rebuking him. What? Have you not houses to eat and drink in, or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Uh, they, they were getting out of control. Uh, there were things going on there. Uh, verse 21, For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. I, I believe they were abusing the church. And we as Christians, if we're not careful, we can abuse the body of Christ and use it for our own gain. That's what churches are doing today. Church, people are angry. A lot of Christians don't go to church because they went to church and gave their heart and gave their service and gave their money. And then 
they got cut in the back. Amen? And a lot of people just don't want to go to church anymore. Now, they're wrong too, mind you. You ought to be in church, amen? You ought, to, you ought not quit looking for a good Bible-believing church. But I can't blame There's some people out there that got burned real bad. And they're bitter. And they're hurt. As they went to church and someone was eating and drinking and they were, they were the rich folks and we had to sit down under their footstool and they, they treated us like garbage there. And, Paul, and that's over there in James where some were rich men and they saw a man come in with beggarly clothes and said, sit down there at my footstool. And the rich man, he said, come up here and sit with me. And we ought not to have those kind of cliques in the church, amen. We ought to love one another without dissimulation. We ought to love one another with the love of Christ. And so there was a lack of reverence for the Lord's a lack of reverence for the Lord's table, for the Lord's house, because we are that bread. We are on the table, amen? We are the bread of God. How? We're the body of Christ. And this is what it represents. This bread represents the body of Christ. You ought to treat the, the body of Christ with reverence. You ought to treat God's people with honor. You know, there's a lack of honor today. Don't you see that? I see that all the time. People jumping in line. People just uh, going through red lights, cutting people off. There's just uh, disrespect with words. Not treating women with respect. Children disrespectful to parents. There's a, just a general lack of honor in our day. That should grieve you. That's what we're talking about. There's a lack of honor towards one another. And there's a lack of fear and honor to God. Come on. Nowadays, it's just every man for himself. Nobody keeps the word anymore. It used to be you say something, you do it. God expects a Christian to keep his word. And uh, that's part of being in church. It grieves me. It should grieve you. Amen. There's Christians that should be here this morning. There's Christians that made a vow to God. I want to be a good Christian. I want to serve you, Lord. And they don't come to church. We need to pray for them. Amen. It's true. But we can only pray so much. They got to they do right. They got to treat God's house too like you do. Some of you folks are very faithful and I appreciate that. Amen. I commend you. Paul commended the Christians here. He said that ye keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you. Some Christians are not going to keep it this morning because they just quit coming to church because they just don't have time for it. That's a lack of reverence. Can I get an amen? We need to revere the house of God and say this is important. Church needs to stay open. People need to pay tithes. People need to go out and witness. We all need to do our part. Otherwise, our church and every church in this country, if there's not a reverence for God's things, they'll close up. And they are. Look over with me in uh, what wrote, Acts chapter 20, verse 7. Acts chapter 20, verse 7. The reason you read your Bible is you, you want to be like the early church. You want to do what the Christians were doing. You say, what, what is a Christian, how is a Christian supposed to live? Read your Bible. Read the book of Acts. Read how that they cared for one another. How that they, they gave and sacrificed. And um, chapter 20, in verse 7, it says, uh, excuse me, what did I say? Acts 20, oh, okay, verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together, Christians got together once a week at least there. Some places it looks like they broke bread daily. Amen. That might not have been the whole congregation. That might have been a few folks getting together. Amen. That's a good thing. Stay close with a few folks in the church. And hey, why don't you come over for dinner tonight? We'll break bread and have some fellowship in the Lord. But at least once a week, it says here, that during that week they got together. And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread. They came together to take the Lord's Supper at least once a week. Now we don't do it that often. But these Christians did and it was a revered thing. They didn't miss that. They said this is a special time. Church ought to be a special time for you. You ought to pray up. You ought to say I want to hear something from the Lord. I want to hear something from the Word of God. And I want to, I want to revere the Word of God. I want to be there. And there's a lack of reverence today. There's a lack of reverence towards, even on Memorial Day, just, or any of these holidays, Labor Day or uh, 4th of July, Independence Day. It's like everything's just a game and fun. But we don't sit and reflect on what, what we're doing. 
what made our country, who sacrificed. And when we don't know our history, we, we tend to forget what others have done and or we tend to repeat history. And America goes back and there's a cycle of life. And America's going back to paganism. Yeah. We're going back to where the Indians were when, they, when we came here, when the Pilgrim Fathers came here. The Americans today are worse than the Indians that were living here. Amen. And they were savages without the Word of God. What the people in America are doing today are worse. Amen. The Indians are better off. So how can that be? They weren't doing the wicked things that are going on in this country today. Perverseness. They didn't even have the Word of God and they had more sense. And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread. Sunday is no longer important to Christians. People go out to the beach. They go out to the park. They go out hunting. They do whatever they want. Today should be a certain day. The day of the week. Sunday. The first day of the week. You say that's the Lord's day. Make a commitment in your heart. When you take the Lord's Supper you say this is important to me. The Lord's day is the first day of the week. It was important to those Christians. And they broke bread. Paul preached unto them. You know how he preached till midnight, the Bible says. He preached all day. Now, I used to have a young man. He was in our church. He's like, I, I hope, wish we could stay all day in church. And then he got married. And then he had, you know, business. And just like many people, church is over right out the door. Is that you? Do you get that way? You, when you first got saved, you couldn't get enough church. And then you've been saved a while. You don't even have time to shake someone's hand or stick around a little bit after church services because you've got so much to do. We should revere this day. We should slow down on Sunday. It's a day of rest. We ought to come to church with an open heart and say, I'm not in a rush. I want to hear everything God's got for me. Maybe even come early for Sunday school at 945. Maybe even take a venture and say, I'll come at 930 and pray with the pastor and the, some of the men that get together for prayer. Amen. Sunday is the Lord's Day. That's how I look at it. Don't you? The first day of the week, the day of the resurrection. This is the day of the Lord where he, we, we should rejoice and we should get together with other Christians. And today, it's just so many Christians are too busy to even come back to church. Some Christians don't come for months. Because there's a lack of reverence. The Lord's Supper is not revered because they don't even come to church. Paul says here, you come, you're eating and drinking and one before the other, and you don't think of anyone else but yourself. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 30. Leviticus 19, 30. When the Jews were given the word of God and the, the law, God said to revere what he told them to do. Verse 30, ye shall keep my Sabbaths and, re and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Now I know this isn't the sanctuary, it isn't the temple. But this is the best thing we got, amen? Closest thing you're going to have. I like to call it the sanctuary. It ought to be a place where there's some holiness that goes on in this church, amen? We ought not to curse and swear. It ought to be a place where you take your hat off. It ought to be a place where you dress up a little bit because it's a little bit different than Super One or the car wash, amen? Church ought to be a place where you say, this is where I meet with God, I talk with God. He took his shoes off Moses when he saw the burning bush. It ought to be a place that's sanctified in your heart, at least. Amen? I'm not saying you've got to put on airs for others, but I'm saying it ought to be different. And the Lord said it ought to be revered. The, the house of God should be a place revered. That's my first point. So you, you and I, I'm not in a hurry today. Amen? We ought to think about these things. And he rebuked the church of Corinth because they didn't revere the Lord's Supper. They didn't revere the ordinance in that way. Look in Hebrews chapter 12, 28. Who are we dealing with this morning? We're dealing with a holy God. A consuming fire. The Bible says here in Hebrews chapter 12, when you get there, say amen. All right. Hebrews 12, 28. Wherefore, we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved... Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Now I learned that from my father. He was an old, he's a Scotchman. He's from the old school. When my dad said, don't you kids play on that road, we didn't play on the road. Because <laughs> we were going to get it. It was go to the bathroom, get over the tub, and my dad take that belt off, and boy, we learned the lesson. 
Some of you raised that way, amen? And there was a godly fear. There was a reverence for our parents. And there needs to be that reverence for the Lord. A reverence for this table. And secondly, let's go back to our text, 1 Corinthians 11, 23. There should be a remembrance. That's why we're doing this. We want to remember what God has done. Verse 23 says, If I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. We're to do this in remembrance of Jesus. If for no other reason, that's what he told us to do. And many Christians don't take time to do this and have remembrance of what the Lord did in shedding his precious blood and giving his body on the cross. We do this this morning just to remember what a great God we, say, we serve. Amen. It's a privilege to take of this cup. Amen. That he would allow us to be worthy to come and drink his blood. How? Receiving his word into our heart. To eat his body. He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part with me. When you got saved, God says, here's my blood shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me, he said. I was a little boy, and I wasn't even saved, and I wanted to take the Lord's Supper because everyone was doing it. And my dad said, I said, Dad, can I take it? I want to take it. I must have been about nine years old or ten. My dad just got saved. And he says, well, why do we do it? And I looked up on that table, and it said, this do in remembrance of me. And I said, this do in remembrance of me. And he says, oh, yeah, you can take it. I wasn't even saved, <laughs> but he let me take the Lord's Supper. Does it say it on our table there? No, some of them have that. It says, this do in remembrance of me. You know why we're taking the Lord's Supper this morning? To remember what Jesus did for us. What he's done for you. Look, he's done so much for you, amen? And you ought to, you ought to say, Lord, help me to be faithful to remember you in my life. And this is a good way to remember the Lord. Thirdly, we do it in reflection. Look at verse 26 through 20, well, 27 and 28. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. If you're not saved, then that would mean you. Because the only person that's worthy of the cup is one who has received Jesus Christ already in their heart. He shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. If you're not saved and you don't know the Lord and you're of a right mind, I mean, you're not a child. I was a child when I did that. I didn't know what I was doing. But if you're an adult, you should be saved. You should know the Lord. And if you don't, then you're going to be guilty of his body and the blood that you knew about, that he died for you. But let a man examine himself, whether he's saved or not. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. If Christ does not live in you, you are not his body. That's what it means. If he lives in you, you can discern that I am the body of Christ. And this is symbolizes what Christ has done for me. I, am, I have received that blood. I have received that body. And I am not guilty of the body and blood of Christ. If a man rejects Jesus Christ, he is guilty of his blood and his body. And he'll go to hell because he rejected it. And that's what that's saying. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So judge yourself. Are you saved? And secondly, judge yourself if you've been living as you ought to live as a Christian. Say, Lord, help me this morning to reflect on my life. Am I living the way I should? So this, this table should be taken with reverence, with remembrance, and with reflection on yourself this morning. And I'd like to take Brother Drew, come on up. Brother Nick, if you'd come up. We, we're going <laughs> to...